Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make a neuron in Blender. So this is going to be some bio viz stuff. We're going to be visualizing a human brain cell. I've done this before in the past, about seven years ago, I did a tutorial, but it was much more sci-fi and much more unrealistic, but this is actually more accurate to what it kind of looks like. Yes, we're doing some creative lighting and shading, but this is more accurate to the structure. So we're going to be diving into that a little bit. And this is just fun to make. I'll be uploading my original to um, Patreon. And just real quick, if you ever wanna take your Blender skills further and you want some high quality courses, you can look in the description below and you can actually use my link to get one month of free Skillshare all in the description below. And you can even check out once you do that, some of my courses, they're all Blender at the moment and they take you step-by-step step from making some really awesome projects. And it comes with all of the files and resources and it's just really cool. So far I've had hundreds of students and the feedback has been fantastic. So in the description below and let's get started with this tutorial. So if you go to your search browser and you do a quick image search for neurons, you're gonna see this is kind of more or less what we get, okay? So there's a few different spins on it, but more or less they're telling the same sort of story. This is kind of the thing we're going for. This is more or less what a neuron looks like, okay? So let's make that in Blender. So we're gonna jump into Blender. And inside of Blender, we're just gonna start by selecting everything, pressing delete, and we're gonna go shift A. We're gonna add in a UV sphere. And with this UV sphere, we're gonna right click, we're gonna go shade smooth, and let's go S, Z, and just flatten it down on the Z a little bit. Let's press seven to go to our top orthographic view. We're gonna go over to our sculpting workspace. Once again, if you have to, just go back to the top orthographic view by pressing seven on the number pad, and from the top, we're gonna to start sculpting it. But a few things, let's just quickly go to our dynamic topology under our active tools, and just, it'll say okay, you're gonna click on okay. And um, let's just, you know, under that change the detail size under the dynamic topology. Let's just change that to five. Then we're gonna go over here to our snake hook brush. We're gonna go F to grow our brush. And then we're just gonna kind of select a little bit over here. We're just gonna kind of drag and drag it out like so. And you can see that's what we did. We're gonna do the same thing along here. So let's grab over here. Let's kind of do the same thing and maybe let's grab one over here. Do kind of like a wavy pattern. Let's grab one over here like so, and maybe one here, kind of like a wavy starfish, if you will. And then let's do one more kind of over here like that. Now, before we go any further, let's just quickly go back into layout. Let's go Shift A, let's cut our curve options. Let's add in a Bezier curve. And with your Bezier curve, um, just kind of move it over to the side here. And then go into edit mode and just select it all and press delete in edit mode and then delete the vertices. Now you can come over here to your tools, click on a draw brush, kind of begin over here and then just click and drag and drag out a line like so. If you have to, you can always just select these handles, position them, move them where you want to. I'm gonna go for something like this, and then I'm gonna go back into object mode. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go over to your object data properties for the curve. You're gonna go over to your geometry, and under the bevel, you're gonna give it some um, depth. So let's go with something like this. Let's go fill caps, and now let's press F3 and type in convert. And let's convert that mesh, um, this curve to a mesh. So now you can see it's a mesh. So what we're gonna do, it's gonna hold and shift with this selected, select the star bit here and go Control J or Command J. Now they're all joined together. Go over to your modifiers and let's give this a remesh. And let's go over here and make it 0 0.05 and then come to the drop down and apply that. So now we have this. I'm just gonna right click again and go Shade Smooth and let's go over to our sculpting workspace again. And let's go and enable dynamic topology if it's gone off. And now what you're gonna do, you're gonna get your inflate brush over here. And you're just gonna come here and inflate the neuron, this thing here that comes towards the inside. Just give it a bit more thickness. You can come here to the bottom if you have to and just kind of inflate that like so. Okay, now that looks a lot better. Let's come here to the end. Let's inflate it towards the end here a little bit as well, and that's looking a lot better. So now let's go back to our snake hook brush. Let's press F to shrink that, and let's come in here, and now we're gonna grab and just draw 
the little um, tendrils that come out like this. And if you go over to some references online, you can see this is kind of what we're going for. Okay, so if you want to have an idea of what we're doing. So let's just go back to that and let's go over here. Um, do as many of these as you feel you need to. I'm just kind of trying to match what most references kind of show. Something like this. And all we're doing is just dragging these out. And over here, dragging them out. And let's do the same thing over on this one. You can do it as random as you want. Make it look as, you know, unique. Don't have to make it look exactly like mine. That's the whole point. Because this is kind of like an organic thing. Uh, you have a lot of creative license when it comes to how you adjust these different little strands that kind of come off here. And what I'm going to do then is to get my grab brush. And at this point, you can kind of narrow these out a little bit just by kind of bringing them in. It's a great way of adjusting. Um, but you guys can, you know, take your time with that. I just feel like they're a little bit thick in some places. So I'm just going to kind of slim them down. It's obviously going to be different for you depending on how you've done this, right? But you get the overall idea. We're just kind of making these little uh, tendrils that come off the ends of these kind of stars. And I think that looks pretty good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our grab brush. And now we're going to kind of do something similar here in the end. But if you look at a reference, these ones are a little bit different in the sense that they don't have like this kind of star that branches off. It's just kind of one bit and it comes out like a little kind of like a tree. Right, with these little nubs in the ends. Let's kind of imitate that by going in here with our snake hook brush. We're going to come in here again. This time I'm going to go F to shrink the brush. And let's just make sure it's the, sorry, the snake hook brush. I grabbed the wrong brush here. So with the snake hook brush, you might have to grow it just a little bit bigger to get started with, but we're doing something like this, as you can see. And let's grab over here. And you might have to grab can be a little bit tricky but you just want to get, kind of get it started with a little nub and then grab it and kind of draw it out so picture like a bit of a tree branch kind of thing happening same thing over here kind of bring this one out you know that's looking pretty good i mean it's pretty simple to do this you're just going to go like that and then what you can do is you can get the inflate brush if they've gone a little bit thin you can kind of just inflate them that's a cool little trick and do this over here. We're going to remesh this in a second, so it doesn't matter too much, but you kind of get the idea. Now that's looking pretty good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go in to our layout. We're going to go Shift A. We're going to add in a UV sphere. And in our top orthographic view still, let's just shrink this down and put it towards the end here. And then we're going to go Shift D to duplicate. And we're just going to duplicate one and put them at the ends of any of these ones that you've kind of made here in the sculpting mode. Shift D to duplicate, something like this. And then you just have to kind of go to the side view and just move them up a little bit till you feel that they're properly embedded in the mesh here. So let's move that up. Let's move this one up and this one. Might grab this one and just move it in a bit. So it's gonna obviously be different for you depending on how you sculpted these. But you guys kind of get the general idea. We're then just gonna select all of these and holding in shift, select the neuron. So all of these little spheres, I'm going to go control J again to join them. And then let's go to our remesh and remesh this. Let's make it 0 0.02. And let's come to the drop down and apply that. So now we have this. And what we're going to do is we're now going to go shift A and we're going to go and grab a cylinder. And let's go into our front of a graphic. I'm going to go R90 and hit enter. And inside of edit mode, make sure all of this is active and then go S, X and scale along the X a little bit. Then go to your face select and just select the end faces. And then you can go control B just to bevel and then roll the middle mouse button to add a few segments in. Then come here in the middle, control R, left click twice and then S to scale. And then go control B just to make a bevel and you can roll the middle mouse button to add in more segments. Something like this and you're going to tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. And what you're going to do is you're going to go S to scale that down, G to move it. And this is kind of going to be this um, myelin sheath that you see over here on the neuron. So we're going to take this and um, let's start over here. We're going to rotate it and then go Shift D to duplicate it. Let's make another one. Um, 
I think we might just scale these down just a little bit actually. So I'll delete this one, scale it, and then duplicate it. And I think that's looking a lot better. So something like that. Let's grab it over here. And you get see what we're doing here. Just gonna duplicate, move it along. And let's do one more duplication like this. And that's looking pretty good. We're then gonna go Shift A and just add in a quick UV sphere. Let's just bring it over here, scale it way down, and then go S, X, and scale it along the X. And we're just gonna place these in here like this. Scale them down, right click, go Shade Smooth. And um, these guys, we want them to kind of be visible, but, but in the inside. We're gonna give this a transparent material. So we're gonna go Shift D. Let's just duplicate them and bring them along here. This is optional, but it kind of is something you see on references. So I'm just adding it in. And then you're just gonna take all of that and you're gonna hold in shift and select a neuron and then go control J to join it. Now this is all one object and we're done modeling. So there you're gonna go into your front orthographic view. You're gonna go RX90 and you can press enter. And then we're gonna go over to our render engine. Let's make this cycles. Let's make the device GPU. And under the render, let's set our max samples to something like 50. And then we're gonna go ahead and go to our materials. Let's give this a material, let's just call it Neuron. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our um, viewport display and just so we can see what the material is. Let's just give it a slight pinkish material. And then we're gonna click create another material, go new. And let's click on that and call it the myelin, which is the um, sheaf. So we'll call it the myelin sheaf because that's what it is. You don't have to call it that, but that's just what that bit is supposed to be. So the myelin sheaf. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and tab into edit mode. And we're just going to select all of these bits over here. The kind of like the, you know, these speed looking things. And we're going to assign the myelin sheaf material to that. And let's go to the viewport display and just give that its own kind of shading, just so we know what it is. And then, and then we're just gonna select all of these little beads in the inside that we've created. I'm just holding in shift and selecting an edge on each one of them. And then you're gonna go control L and that just selects all of that. And let's go plus, assign, and let's go new. And what's that called? I think those things, heck, I might just call it that. So I'm gonna go, so once again, I just, you know, I'm particular about naming things sometimes, but you guys get the idea here. So now that we have all of these placeholder materials, let's go into our front view. Let's go shift A, add in the camera. I like to move my camera back a little bit. And then you can actually grab the cell and just scale it way down and then bring it kind of more into the camera view like this. And it's actually quite a beautiful looking structure at the moment, but we're gonna go control B and just drag over the camera to limit the rendering to the camera. And then we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in an area light and move it up. I'm gonna give it a strength of 200 and we're just gonna scale it up and then scale it on the X. We're then gonna go Shift D in the side view, move one behind the neuron. I'm gonna set that to 1200, so it's really intense. And then if you go into your camera view and you go Z and you go rendered, um, you can actually duplicate that light and bring it down and rotate it up slightly. We just want to get this nice kind of rim lighting and that's why we're doing that. Um, just in case you guys are wondering. So we have this nice kind of rim lighting and then we want to just duplicate one of these lights and just bring it from the front and let's have it coming off from the side just a little bit. And that's gonna kind of give it a little bit of lighting so it's not too dark at the front. So now I'm just gonna save it to my desktop. Let's go into our shading workspace and now you can go ahead and go select a neuron, go to your materials. Let's start with the neuron itself. And let's go Shift A over here, click and let's type in noise, get a noise texture. Let's go and plug that into the base color. Shift A, search and get a color ramp node. Place it over here. And if you're using the node wrangle add-on, just select your noise texture and then go Control T or Command T. If you don't have the node wrangler enabled, you can enable it or just manually search these two nodes up and plug them into the vector. But what we have here is the generated going in here at the moment, but let's just make it object going to the vector for the mapping. And then the vector goes into the vector of the noise texture. And then now we're just gonna come and change the values here. 
dragging them together just to make them a little bit tighter. And let's come here to the scale and make it two. And let's come to the detail and drag that up all the way to 15 and also the roughness a little bit. And now what we can do is we can actually go shift A, search and get another color ramp, place it on this cable, drag this value up and this value down. And let's change this one to kind of like a pinkish material and the darker value will make pink, but a very dark kind of pink. And let's just drag it down. So something like this, maybe even a little bit lighter in value, a little bit more pink. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna drag the base color or the color of the color ramp into the roughness. Then you're gonna go shift a search and get a bump. And let's place this bump node down here. And we're gonna take the normal, plug it into the normal of our principled. And then we're gonna take that um, black and white color ramp and we're gonna plug it into the height of our bump node. And let's just give it a strength of Let's just give that a strength of 0.3. And now you can see that's our neuron material. Let's now select the myelin sheath. And let's go and give that a base color that's slightly pinkish. Let's go bring the roughness almost all the way down. And let's bring the transmission all the way up, like so. In fact, I might make the base color even a little bit more pink, like that. And now let's just get the, sh the cell and in the inside here, that little, um, and I see it needs a H over here. Sorry about all of the naming, but anyway. And we're gonna change the base color here to kind of like a darkish kind of reddish pink, like that. And there we have our neuron. At this point, you could add in a plane and put it in the background. Um, this is completely up to you how you wanna um, stage this, but this is more of the idea of what we're doing here. I might just give that plain a material for now, just make it darker. But there you have it. That is how you can make a neuron in Blender. Let's go ahead and save. Let's go render and render image and see what this neuron looks like. And there you have it guys, that is a neuron in Blender. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. I'll be uploading this model to my Patreon. And if you go to the description below, that's uh, something you can check out along with my Skillshare link. They can give you access to Skillshare for one month. So I'll see you guys next time for another Blender tutorial and thank you for watching.